Welcome everyone to the Xeno Room. It's been quite some time since I've made a YouTube video of the Xenoblade collection, so I figured we should end 2023 with a nice new updated collection tour. Now if you watched last year's video, you can definitely tell that there is a lot more stuff in this room than there was last year. I've even added some shelves and rearranged some things, and I am super happy with the collection. Now before we get started, I just want to say that the whole reason why I make these videos about my collection and I show it off here is not to brag or to boast, but it is to inform you guys of what all exists. There is a ton of Xenoblade merchandise that is locked behind regions like South Korea or Japan or Europe or Taiwan, and there's a lot of merchandise that some people don't even know exists, so the whole purpose of this collection and me making videos is to show you guys what all is out there. So I've had a bit of a hard time trying to figure out how to organize this video. I think last year I went through and I pointed out and I talked about every single item. Uh, that's just becoming less and less feasible to do, and it would make for probably a boring video. So I'm just going to give a broad overview of some different shelves and maybe where things are from for certain special editions. Now let's start off over here at the new shelves where we can really get into the meat of things. At the very top here, we have a ton of Xenoblade collector's editions from all sorts of different regions. Uh, in order here, we have Australia, North America, Europe, uh, South Korea is flipped backwards there, and then Japan. And behind those are a bunch of these scale figure boxes, uh, which are on display on other shelves in my collection. Coming on down, we have a bunch of Xenoblade 2 collector sets. Uh, we have Japan, Europe, Australia. This little one in the front is South Korea. And then we have the North American Special Edition. The two shelves below that show off some of the contents which come in those collector sets. So you can see we have a bunch of steel books, a bunch of CDs for two. And then coming on down to Definitive Edition, we have some more steel books one of which is a CD steelbook, and then we have a CD and a record. Next up, we have this OG Xenoblade Wii shelf. Uh, now there's a ton of different Xenoblade Wii things here. We have the European Special Edition with the red controller. We have the North American game, uh, some old flyers and brochures, the North American booklet. Uh, but the coolest thing on this shelf is this promotional DVD from April of 2010. Now, obviously, as you can tell by the date, this is a Japanese not for resale disc. Uh, this contains a ton of game trailers on it for the Wii version, obviously. And at the bottom there, it says it should be destroyed by August of 2010 or returned to Nintendo by then. And obviously it did not. So that is a very cool piece that I recently picked up this year. Below that, we have a Xenoblade X section. Now I am missing the European special edition for X. Uh, however, that is really it. This year before the eShop closed, I actually purchased these two Xenoblade collector sets. Uh, that included a Wii U console. So that way I could download like the 15 gig DLCs uh, on a Japanese and European Wii U. Uh, and before the price skyrocketed, which Wii U prices have kind of been going crazy ever since then. And while we're on the topic of Xenoblade X, I actually have the Formula Model Kit uh, box sitting up here. I still haven't built this thing. I really need to. If we make our way over to the glass case, which is normally the backdrop for the TikTok videos, we can see at the top we have the Pyra and Mithra shelf. It has moved, but it is the same as last year, except now the Pyra and Mithra amiibo are out. So that is a very great addition to the shelf. And below that we have my prized possession shelf, let's just say. Uh, we have the beautiful acrylic that was released around the same time as Torna in Japan. Then we have the luxury edition of the Xenoblade 2 soundtrack. This is something that I've had on my wish list for a very long time, and I was finally able to pick one up for a decent price. So I'm super happy to have that in my collection now. And then behind that, we have the European coin set uh, that features coins of Xenoblade Chronicles, Pandora's Tower, and The Last Story, along with the Trinity box on the shelf as well. Next up, we have the deluxe edition of the Xenoblade 2 soundtrack, uh, featuring two bookmarks there, one from the USB and one from this, uh, the signed art card, the My Nintendo poster set, the My Nintendo folders, a few of those are back there, and then the Nia figure that was released this year. Going on down again, we have some Definitive Edition stuff. Behind Melia there is a microfiber clock that was a pre-order bonus from Rekuten Books in Japan. And then there's this lanyard, which was a pre-order bonus in Europe for Definitive Edition. And obviously the Metallic Museum Monado is here as well. If we go on down again, we can see these shelves get a little sparse here, which is actually good because then I'll have some room to grow the collection into. Uh, we have some Torna items. This little plastic piece here is a GameStop promotional piece uh, that would have been hanging up in the store 
around the time that Torna was released. At the very top of this shelf here, we can see the Siren model kit box, uh, the Nia box, a signed poster from Harry McIntyre, and I actually have David Menken's as well. Uh, I just have not got that framed yet. And below that, we have the Mio Tapestry. That was a pre-order bonus through Gamers in Japan. We can see I have a very small Xenogears and Xenosaga collection. I haven't really been focusing on collecting for these. I've just kind of slowly been accumulating random pieces and lots. Uh, that I've been importing from Japan. But we also have the Good Smile figure of Cosmos here from Xenoblade 2. Next up, we have another definitive edition shelf. In the background there, we have some of the soft cover books from the collector sets. On the side, we have the original soundtrack. I bought two copies uh, just so I could display the Future Connected cover on one of them. These two little plastic pieces are pre-order bonuses from Hong Kong and South Korea. We've got the Melia microfiber cloth that was released on the My Nintendo Japanese store. And then coming on down, we have some boxed Amiibo, some postcards. Uh, I haven't even collected the full set. I just randomly have this one postcard here uh, that would have been released alongside a Japanese Xenoblade 2 collector's set pre-order. Uh, you would have got a pack of, I believe it was like eight postcards and this poppy is out of that group. And then there is also this Tora and Poppy card that came with pre-orders of the Xenoblade 2 soundtrack, and there's a couple different versions uh, with a couple different drivers and blades. Underneath the amiibo we have these clear poster sets of main story blades and drivers from Xenoblade 2, uh, and there is all sorts of these and I have no idea how to display these. Back over to the other side of the room we have a bunch of Xenoblade 3 stuff. Uh, I've been trying to keep up and trying to collect everything for Xenoblade 3 as it comes out, uh, because that is way more affordable than waiting until it's too late. So I've actually done a video on this channel uh, covering all of the pre-order bonuses that were released for Xenoblade 3, uh, and there is a ton. So if you want to know what all is out there pre-order bonus-wise, I highly recommend checking out that video. For instance, South Korea got these two awesome mouse pads. Um, Taiwan got like this little bag and Ziploc bag. Um, those are kind of talked about in the video, but I didn't have them at that time. Obviously, we have the Xenoblade 3 Collector's Edition soundtrack with the flutes. It is a very nice package, and I'm super happy that they included some sort of flute with it. Nintendo of America randomly released this coaster set here in this beautiful metal tin. Uh, so that's a new addition for Xenoblade 3 this year. The Metallic Museum Lucky 7, or like Hidden Sword, I believe it's called in Japan, um, was also released this year. And at the very top of the shelf, we have a ton of Xenoblade 3 and Future Redeemed Acrylics that were all released uh, within the last two years uh, by Empty Amazing Creations. There are just so many of these acrylics. Uh, they definitely do take up like the majority of one whole shelf to themselves. And overall, the waves one through three were all super great, and I don't think we're getting any more of those. Moving on underneath the Xenoblade 3 shelf, there's a bunch of magazines, strategy guides, art books from the special editions, all kind of stuffed down here. And there's even a pre-order bonus poster down there. Uh, basically just a bunch of stuff that kind of belongs on a bookshelf, is actually on a bookshelf down there. The very last section of official merchandise is this little pocket here, which is a ton of Xenoblade 3DS stuff. Uh, I never thought that I would have an entire shelf dedicated to Xenoblade 3DS, but uh, apparently we're here now. A few notable things that I'm missing for Xenoblade 3DS would be the European 3DS bundle. I do have one of the customizable 3DSs here with the case on it, but I do not have the full box set. And the last Xenoblade 3DS thing I'm missing to my knowledge is a folder. Um, it's one of the plasticky folders like the Xenoblade 2 ones. It was released as a pre-order bonus and they hardly ever pop up in Japan. And every time I see them pop up, they've already sold. So I need to snag one of those eventually. Now we move on to the fan-made merchandise. Uh, every year I put up the Xeno Tree as in tradition uh, on TikTok. You can see a GameStop banner makes up a very nice tree skirt. And this tree is just covered in fan-made pins and charms and merchandise. Uh, and I love how this tree turns out every year. I also have a few shelves dedicated to fan-made merchandise. Uh, and I'm glad that all of this stuff can kind of stay separate from the rest of the room because it looks great to see the community come together all in one spot. There's all sorts of awesome fan-made merchandise on these shelves. There's a few business cards scattered about to kind of uh, show you who made what, or at least to help give some sort of indication. And if anyone wants to know where something is from, just feel free to leave a comment. 
Uh, but there are so many awesome people in the Xenoblade community who make so many great items and I just can't help but display them. And one last little shelf I want to talk about here is this Beyond 3D prop shelf. Uh, this year I have been working hard to create all sorts of different Xenoblade replicas and pieces of merchandise. When it comes to the flutes there, you can see that there are four for Chris slash young Noah and Noah and Mio and Miyabi and young Mio. I'm still working on ironing out some of the details with the Chris and Miyabi ones, but the Noah Mio ones in the center there I have been selling uh, on my website, which I'll have linked down below. But I have been so happy and honored to be able to add some pieces of Xenoblade merchandise to people's collections. And that about concludes our collection tour for 2023. Uh, if there's anything you saw in this video that I didn't really touch on that you would like to know more about, feel free to leave a comment below uh, and maybe I'll make a video on it or I will definitely respond to your comment uh, answering your question. And one last thing before I go, I have made TikTok videos on almost every single one of these items talking about their history uh, and about where they're from and everything. So if that is something you are interested in, I would greatly appreciate your support over there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm excited to watch this collection grow even further.